if it's somebody's birthday today. <laughs> That's right, it's Leslie's birthday. And nobody's gonna watch this video anyways. You know, nothing's gonna be on YouTube. No. Alright, we're doing it. <laughs> we're, we're, yes, we're recording right now, Caitlin. No, I don't want to be famous. Once, once again, we're at 3 5. We're talking about what? Continuity. Alright? And, and behavior. But most specifically, right now, we're talking about continuity. Well, it's Leslie's birthday today, so I have a special birthday sauce for you. Alright? Oh, shh, here we go. Are we all kind of No, just me. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if you're watching this video, you might want to fast forward to this. You might, you might be scarred for the rest of your life. Oh. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Pain and sorrow and despair. People dying everywhere. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Congratulations, you're now 18 and you get to be, have a wonderful, happy life. Uh, I'm to start her for <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're going to do. I know, I'm so sad. Why did you do that? Because she's 18 yeah, yeah. Right. and the world. All right, here we go. First thing I want you guys to do is we're going to be typing in two equations into the graphing calculator, but they have to meet both of these conditions, where x is greater than or equal to 1 with the first equation, and where x is less than 1 on the second equation. So. What I want you guys to do is go to your graphing calculator, hit the Y equals button, and in the Y1, I want you to practice typing in alpha Y equals enter to get that fraction. All right? Now, in the numerator, we're going to type in a 2X plus 1. And Victoria, help me out in the denominator. I have to open up a parentheses. I have to hit the X. Then I have to hit second math to get me to all these inequality symbols. So, all right. So let me let me think here real quick. All right. So second math gets me here. Now, which which inequality symbol are we working with for number uh, number three? Number four. So it's greater than. So we're working with the greater than or equal to. So I'm going to select number four, and that's going to put the greater than or equal to sign right there. And what's it have to be greater than or equal to? One. So I'm going to put a one. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. And what the cool thing about this is, everybody, the graph is only going to graph, all right, where x is greater or equal to one. So it kind of limits what the graph is going to be. Now, why do we put it in the denominator? We're putting it in the denominator because that right there controls, if you do anything less, it's going to be an error. Okay? So we're putting it in the denominator so it only graphs those points. So when I graph, notice, where does the graph start? The graph starts right here where it's greater than or equal to a 1. So you can check your table. What does the table say we're at? If I have an x, y table for the y1. When I'm at 1, what my y value is at a 3. Okay? So basically, you're starting your graph right here at 1, 3. So it's including that point, and it's just going up from there. So what I'd like you to do right now, on your paper, for number 3, on your paper, I'll go back over here. Go back where we had one more. Okay, so right here, just kind of estimate. Hey, right here at one, it will go up one, two, three. Put a point. Put a point right there. It's including it, and then draw a line, preferably a straight line, Casey. Straight line. Like that didn't sound like a straight line. You know what that looked like? It sounded like this, Casey. 
That's a pretty good straight line. It's wrong. It's the wrong. It's totally the wrong slope. Though. So make sure it appears to have a slope of two. About that. Pretty, pretty important. All right. Okay. Just let you know your voice is being recorded for not paying attention while we're going on this. Oh, I know. I know. I will be able, people will be able to hear it all around America that you weren't paying attention while we're doing this. Shame on you! Alright, so this is our first graph. So right here. The first graph is where we did y1 and that and we did 2x plus 1. And how did we do that? We put x is greater than or equal to 1, and that's how it graphed only this portion of the graph. Okay? Now, the next part, everybody, we're going to go. Fast forward here to all these. Quick. All right. The next part, we're going to graph the next one right here. So in y2, so if y equals, go down to y2. Once again, hit alpha y equals and enter. Now, Leslie, what am I going to put in the numerator of this one? What's the second graph we're typing in? 4 minus x squared. Very good. 4 minus x squared. She said that with authority, people. Yes, authority. All right. Open up a parentheses. I'm going to type in an x, and we'll see if Casey remembers how to get to the inequality symbols. You remember how to get to the inequality symbols, Casey? Woo. Second math is correct. That's kind of impressive right there. Second math. Now, which symbol are we going to use this time? Number five. All right. So we actually have to go to number five, which is less than, and we type in a and then we close the parentheses, and then we hit the graph button. All right? Oh, I don't have a lot. Okay. It goes? All right. Now, let's think about this. Right here, all right, if you look at your other table, so right now, look at your Y2 table where you have the X's and the Y values. All right? At 1, what does your Y value say in your table at 1? It says error, right? Because we cannot include the 1, correct? So, but however, though, the 1 is being included in the blue, but the 1's not being included in the red. However, if one of them isn't including it, is there any discontinuity in the graph, or is it continuous? It's continuous. Even though this one says error, because it's all the numbers, what? All the numbers leading up to a 1, right? Where x is 1, all of them leading up to it but not including it, but the other one does include it, okay? So let me explain to you guys one thing right now that you need to know the difference between. This graph, everybody, this graph is considered to be continuous. Let me explain to you the graph where you, everything was the same except for one thing, which is where it would be discontinuous, all right? If and only if this symbol right here, if this was x is greater than 1 and this was x is less than 1, then you would have what's called point discontinuity because what the graph would look like, here would be the main difference in the graph. I'm going to look at the graph once again. What would be right here? If that was the case, there would be a open circle at that one little point. So that's called point discontinuity. But we don't have that. Why? Because one of them says greater than or equal to. So we have a graph that that point is actually filled in. So if it's filled in and it just keeps flowing, that's continuous. If it's not filled in, not filled in then if you had a graph that looked like this, let's say you had a test. And I had a graph that looked like this, just the graph, and I said, what type of discontinuity is the graph? You would label this what? Point discontinuity. And it has a circle. And then you'd have to have a circle at that point. Okay? I use this as an example to tell you the difference between what would be continuous and what would be discontinuous. Alright? So. 
So right here, we have a graph where x is what? x is equal to a 1, and the ordered pair would be what? 1, comma, negative 1. Over here, we have also a graph where x is equal to a 1, but this is what? 1, comma, 2. So even though, would you guys agree all the x values are continuous? All right, all the x values are being plotted. However, because the y values are not continuous, this would still be considered jump discontinuity. All right? So in order for something to be continuous, all right, not only do the x values have to be continuous all the way through the graph, but the y values also have to be continuous through the graph. Does that make sense? All right, do you still see the jump that's going between those two graphs there? Okay, so obviously if you had an open circle and another open circle, that'd be pretty easy to, you'd probably still say it. But even if it's still considered to be jump discontinuity, it, if the x values are continuous, but the y values are not. Okay, that's, that's what you have had in your journal as exam. Okay, I want you guys to have the rest of the period to kind of get things going after break. Okay, when we come back, we'll start working on the, what's called end behavior.